glory to God. Alleluia. I said glory to God. Alleluia. Okay, so let's continue our teaching, our learning on God approved Christian dressing. Amen. So we we have we have been looking at uh, this topic for the for about five Sundays now. This will be the fifth Sunday. This is the fifth Sunday, and um, we have we have we have learned something for past four Sundays, and this is the fifth one. Amen. So, if this is your first hearing of this teaching, it's a series. Uh, please make sure you listen to the first four parts. This is part five of the teaching. Because, because because I might make statements or make say something that you may uh, you know find difficult to agree with or to understand. Well, the people hearing me who have been paying attention for the past uh, four or five Sundays definitely. If they, uh, they understand what I mean. So if you have, if this is what you are just listening to, please make sure you get the earlier four parts. Amen. Amen. So let's open to the book of Genesis chapter 3. This is our text, Genesis chapter 3. We are looking at verses 7 and verse and 21. Verses 7 and 21. Genesis chapter 3, verses 7 and 21. Verse 7 says, Then the eyes of both were opened, and they knew that they were naked, and they sowed thick leaves together and made themselves loin cloths. Verse 21 says, And the Lord God made for Adam and for his wife garments of skins and clothed them. Hallelujah. So, mm-hmm. Amen. So, Amen. So, God in mercy changed the um, the fig leaves, uh, loincloths for them and gave them something durable, something f- better than what they could uh, make for themselves. Hallelujah. Amen. And so the best of man is the fig leaves. That's all. That's what the best wisdom of man could produce. The fig leaves. But the, but the wisdom of God gave them something far, far better. And it was by grace. It was a gift. They didn't work for it. They didn't even beg for it. He gave it to them. Hallelujah. That's how gracious God is. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 And we learned last week uh, that this, we, we can see that man tries to cover his nakedness with his own self-righteousness. But God, but God as a mercy provided a far better and a true righteousness, which is his own righteousness for us in Christ. Amen. So, 
our religion or religiosity and morality, though they are good, but they are not sufficient. They are not adequate to cover our spiritual nakedness and our unworthiness before God. And as believers, it is this righteousness that comes from God, this clothing of righteousness that we celebrate. Not our outward materials of lace, linen, uh, whatever materials we wear. We rather celebrate the glorious, beautiful garment of salvation with which God has clothed us. We, 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 we celebrate the robe of righteousness with which he has covered our nakedness before him. Like we read in the book of Isaiah last week, Isaiah chapter 61 verse 10. Isaiah chapter 61 verse 10 which says I will greatly rejoice in the Lord Amen? Amen So Isaiah speaking by the spirit he said I will greatly you see I will greatly rejoice in the Lord He didn't just say I will rejoice he said I will greatly rejoice Amen Amen I will greatly rejoice. Glory to God. My soul shall exalt in my God. For he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness. So I am no more naked before him. I am no more ashamed to stand in the presence of the Holy God because he has covered me with his own righteousness. Like Paul the Apostle, my joy, my rejoicing, my confidence is not found in the righteousness of my own that comes from obedience to the law, but in the righteousness of God that comes by faith in Christ. Amen. Amen. But today we want to go further in understanding uh, God approved Christian dressing. Now we understand we now we have understood from past teachings that well um God is not in that interested, it doesn't our outward dressing is not what God is is particular about rather he wants to see his righteousness in us and as many of us who have believed the gospel we have received this righteousness of God in us is in us already. We are clothed with it. But the truth is this. 
that even though we have the righteousness, righteousness of God inside us, our spirit is clothed with the righteousness of God, yet all men do not know that fact. They don't know it. Amen. Amen. The people of the world, they don't live by faith. They live by sight. The people of this world, they don't see the garment of righteousness that you are clothed with inside you. They can't see it. So we, even though we know by the word of God that through faith in Christ we have been clothed with the righteousness of God, the world, the unbelievers out there and around us in our neighborhood, in our places of work, they don't know because they cannot see it. <laughs> But the will of God is that they should see that garment of righteousness that we have inside. They, God wants them to see it. So how will they see it? How are we going to help the unbelievers and people around us to know that we are clothed with the righteousness of God. This is where Christian dressing, proper Christian dressing comes in. And when we talk about proper Christian dressing, I'm not even talking about our physical material dressing. For example, if we if we go to uh, the word of God in the book of uh, you know, let's look at. Uh, 1 Timothy chapter 2. 1 Timothy chapter 2. 1 Timothy chapter 2. You know, we read that at the, you know, in the, I think part 1 or part 2, we read that. Amen. The book of 1 Timothy chapter 2. Now we're looking at verse 9 to verse 10. It says, likewise also that women should be should adorn themselves in respectable apparel, with modesty and self-control, not with braided hair and gold or pearls or costly attire, but with what is proper, what is proper for women who profess godliness, that is women who say they are born again. With good works. With what? Good works. So Paul is telling Timothy to teach the church that Christian women, hello, should adorn themselves, beautify themselves, not with um, expensive clothes, not with the style of hair they have on their head, not with jewelry, but that which is proper for those who confess Christ. And that is with what? Good works. So, dressing that will have value in the eyes of men that clothing 
that men will see and say, okay, this person is a true child of God. Paul says that clothing uh, in the eyes of men is what? Good works. Hello? God has clothed us with his righteousness. That's inside. It's inside. You can't see it. But now, God wants your neighbor, your husband, your wife, your children, your uncle, your brother, your sister. God wants your neighbors, people around you in your place of work, he wants them to see that he has clothed you with righteousness inside. And how would they see? He said, clothe yourself with good works. Amen. Now, Paul says Christian women, particularly the wives, amen, he said they are to focus more on clothing themselves with that which is proper. He called it the proper one, eh? not on the material dressing. Hello? But they should dress themselves properly in the presence of their husbands. Hello? With what? Good works. And, and for us to understand the implication of this, or to understand it better, let's hear what the second great apostle also said. That's Apostle Peter. Now let's see First Peter chapter 3. I'll start reading from verse 1. Talking about proper Christian dressing. God approved Christian dressing. It says, likewise, wives. That's from verse 1. It says, likewise, wives. That is, you wives, be subject to your own husbands. That is, be submissive to your own husbands. So that even if some do not obey the word, to obey the word there means to be saved. That is, if they are not born again like you, they are not saved. They don't have the righteousness of God in them like you. Hello? He said that if some do not obey the word, they may be one that is converted, convinced, they may be convinced that, okay, this, my wife is now a child of God. They may be one. They may be convinced that what you have as a child of God is real, is genuine. That they may be one without a word. That is, without you carrying Bible and saying, uh, my husband, let's open to Romans chapter 3, verse 23. Without you telling your husband, they are, let's open to uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 5. No. Without a word, that is without you preaching, eh? by the conduct of their wives, the conduct of their wife. Conduct is another word for what? Behavior. The behavior, the manner of life of their wife. <laughs> Amen. Amen. He says, Your husband, your unbelieving husband, will be one. Verse 2, when they see your respectful and pure what? conduct, when they see, that's what they can see. They cannot see the righteousness of God that is inside you. They can't see the Holy Spirit inside you. But what they can see is what? Your respectful and what? Chaste, pure 
lifestyle. Amen. Amen. So your husband who is not born again, your wife who is not born again, cannot see the Holy Spirit inside you. He cannot see the righteousness of God inside you. You say, oh, I'm born again. I'm a child of God. I have the Holy Spirit inside me. He may even hear you speaking in tongues. She may hear you speaking in tongues. She may see you reading Bible. But let me tell you, he or she is still very blind to all those things. She's blind. All he wants to see is how you respect, how you live, how you conduct yourself, how you behave yourself before him, before her. Amen. Now, Paul wants believers, that is Christian wives, hello, not to focus on their outward adornments. He said your adornment should not be external. It should not be the you know the braiding of your hair, the way you braid your hair, the hairdo, the hairstyle, or the putting on of gold jewelry or clothing that you wear. No, he said no, no, don't try to uh, win your husband by those things. Verse 4, he says, but let your adorning be the eating. Do you see that? The eating person of the heart with the imperishable beauty of what? A gentle and quiet spirit, which in God's sight is very precious. So that gentle and quiet spirit is what God wants you to allow your unbelieving husband or wife or boss in your place of work or colleagues wants you to let them see that gentleness of God in you. Amen. Amen. I hope you are following. Amen. Hello. I hope you are following. So the character, the conduct, the behavior of the Christian wife or the Christian husband, the Christian employee huh, at home and at the place of work, huh, the Christian student in the classroom, in the school, matters a lot. Matters a lot. We learned in the past teaching that Sarah, given to us by Apostle Peter as an example of a holy and godly woman. Hello? Yes, he called our attention to a respectful way or mannerism in communicating or addressing her husband, Abraham. Now, that's what he says in verse four, verse 5. 
to six. For this is how the only women who hoped in God used to adorn themselves, that is, beautify themselves, attract their husbands to themselves by submitting to their own husbands. Verse six, as Sarah obeyed Abraham, calling him Lord, and you are a children. If you do good, you see the word, that clause, do good, do good. If you do good, so that, do that, the good work that the Christian wife is expected to do at home is not the washing of plates, it's not the washing of clothes, it's not the taking care of children per se. It is number one and primarily respect a husband. Respect, respectful way of addressing your husband, talking with your husband. Even though the Bible tells us that um, Sarah called Abraham, my Lord. We are, that doesn't mean that you are also to call your husband, my Lord, my Lord. No, that's not what he's saying. It's a language of respect, honor. So it's not like saying, sir, today, sir. Like, and you don't need to use the word, sir, before you show respect to your husband. The way you talk with him and to him, your, your tone of voice and your, your, your choice of words in communicating with him, particularly when he is wrong, when he is wrong or he, he does something stupid, men do stupid things. When he does something stupid, your manner of correcting him, your manner of uh, speaking to him at that moment in time shows whether you truly respect him or not. And that man will take note of that. Men wants to be respected. Every man, rich or poor, literate or illiterate, wants to be what? Respected. And the Bible says, Christian women should what? Respect their husbands. As Sarah respected Abraham. That is the word of God. Amen. 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 Hello. It doesn't matter what you think. It doesn't matter what society says. What matters is what the word of God says. And the word of God is our authority as believers. That is what we signed to when we said Jesus is Lord. That means you have signed to accept God's word as the final authority Amen. over your life. Amen. 
Nyanyi mau, esoknya cakur di sini tanya aja malu aku, aku tak boleh buat apa pun. Amen. Even if your husband is wrong, he, he has done something or said something or acted in a very stupid way, you should know the manner of way you can tell him that he's wrong. You should be able to wisely tell him in a way that will not tamper with his dignity, with his ego, with his respect. Be very careful because if you say you are born again and you touch that area of any man, see, speak in tongues and let fire be coming on you. Your husband will never listen to you. So, Amen. Is somebody paying attention? Hello. So that as Christian women, we will not just be dressing. Nice clothes, nice hairdo, good jewelry, everything, shaping ourselves. And then we are now, and we are praying, and yet seems things not to change. Why? What Your behavior, your conduct, your mannerism, your disrespecting your husband is counterproductive to your prayer. You understand me? Very important. Please take note of that as Christian women. There is a way you as a Christian wife, you can call your husband to order. That is a wise way to do it. A respectful way to do it. Don't, don't, do it. don't do it in a way that, that is disrespectful. And particularly, listen, pay attention, particularly in the presence of his children, secondly, in the presence of his friends, Thirdly, in the presence of his family, and thirdly, in the presence of his neighbors. And that is, when it is outside you and him, be careful how you talk to your husband. If you disrespect a man outside between you and him, outside, in the eyes of a third party, you are calling for trouble. That is the word of God. <laughs> So learn to talk with him. There's a way um, you can call a man stupid without using the word stupid. You can say that what you do, what you did, is stupid. Is you can there is a way you can say it without using the word stupid. You understand? Ah, this diplomatic way of talking to people, and this not only to husbands, even husband to wife. There is a way you should talk as a Christian husband to your wife, so that you don't touch that ego of your wife too. Uh, that there's something in every human being that loves to be respected and honored, whether male or female, but particularly in the male. And that's why Paul's admonition and Peter's admonition, both apostles agree that Christian women, Christian wives should respect their husbands, submit to them, respect them. Talk to them in a way that communicates respect, not disrespect and dishonor. 
So he said, if you do good, he said, you are a daughter. He said, and you are a children. If you do good, if you do good, that means do good here is making is in reference to what that respectful and pure conduct. So the good work, the goodness that a Christian wife is expected to dress with, to adorn herself before her husband. Is what? Respectful and pure conduct. Very, very precious. More than the jewelry, the hairdo, and the clothes you wear. I hope somebody understands. That is what the Word of God teaches. Amen. 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 So let's be mindful of being properly dressed as believers. We should be dressed with what? In the eyes of men. What should we be dressed with? We should be dressed with what? We should be dressed with what? And the example of good works is what? Respect. Respect all men. Everybody. Respect everybody. Have the language of respect in your mouth. Everybody, male and female, everyone, young and old, everyone loves to be respected. I remember my interpreter when she came to this to meet me in this ministry for the first the first few weeks. I remember, and she can be a witness there. She's standing beside me interpreting. And her husband is a retired soldier, a very tough man. And uh, in those days, before she came to this church and heard the gospel and heard the teaching of God's word, the church she was attending did not teach them how to respect their husband. And so they will fight. She will insult him and fight him. Wear nika. What do you call that thing you wear? That short one. They nika. They will wear nika and say not today be today. They will fight. She will if we, if, we, if he did not leave money for you, your pastor is saying he did not cook for him, have you? He said, Don't cook for him. If he doesn't give you money, don't cook for him. Then if you talk, you insult him. If you say your father, you say your mother, your uncle, your father, everybody to them together. Insult, and that's how she was living with her husband. And the thing was getting worse and worse. But when she came and I began to show her the truth of the word of God, this is what the Bible teaches. And this woman asked me, but he's not, how can I submit to him when he's not doing what he's supposed to do? I said, the, what he, the Bible did not say submit to your husband if he does what he's supposed to do. Do what God's word say and leave the rest to God. And she started practicing that. She started changing. The man will talk, she will be gentle, I will not talk. So no more reply. Quiet. Pray for him. Quiet. Respect him. Honor him. He did not leave money, you cook for him. She started doing all that. One day, the man called me. The man, he doesn't know me, but he somehow he knew somebody is teaching his wife something new, something different. And the wife said, there's one pastor in my neighborhood that in my place of work, he's been teaching me some things. Ah. So he saw me and he said, it's like you are the Nigerian man that is teaching my wife all these things. I said, Sir, yes, I am. So, hmm. And if you have seen the man, if you know his uh, husband, 
very huge guy like this. And say, so, hmm, okay. Uh -huh. So you are the one. Uh -huh. I thought he wanted to beat me up. <laughs> Initially, I didn't know why he was, he was uh, hiring me like that. He said, uh -huh. okay. So you are the one who's been teaching my wife, eh? So you are the one. And I said, yes. Did you know that later, this same man, he doesn't go to church, doesn't go anywhere, doesn't do anything. He claimed to be a, a member of SDA, but he doesn't go to church, doesn't do anything. This same man, one day, carried this woman and all the family, the old children, came to dump them inside this. I said, Pastor, this church is where my wife and my whole family will be coming. This is the church I want them to be coming. You understand? And did you know that this same man has been in contact with me online? He's not in home. He, he, he's been on every day we chat, every day, every day. I can show you every day we chat. And you didn't have been sharing the gospel with this man. Do you know one day this man messaged me and said, Pastor, thank you for this gospel you have been showing me and showing me. I'm, I've made up my mind. Now I'm leaving SDF. He's not been going, you know, what he said. But you know, but in his heart, he's still a member of SDA. He doesn't go to church. He believes that going to church on Sunday is abomination. He made up, he said, no, I've made up my mind. I'm no more an SDA member. I want to find a gospel church where I am. I want to start going to a gospel church. Every day, he will say, thank you, pastor, for this work. And did you know, his life, his family changed. Why? Because the wife yielded herself to the teaching of God's word. Even when he sounded stupid. Because God's wisdom is foolishness to man. You understand? Man's wisdom says, when your husband says you are stupid, you tell him you are mad. Fire for fire. Eh? But when you submit yourself to the wisdom of God, and you maintain, it may look, you may look stupid for some time, but in the end, God's wisdom always prevails. It always Amen. works. It always works. It always works. The last time we met was at your, it was your that woman's funeral at your village, yes. your mother's funeral. Yes. We met there one on one again after a long time. We met, and when we met, 
he was telling me, Pastor, we sat, and he, and he, he took me among his, you know, retired, retired soldier friends. They were seated in a round, on a round table. Oh, he, he took me and introduced me. He said, this is my, my wife's pastor. This is my wife's pastor. He introduced me to everybody, and they all greeted me, and he came to me, and he said, Pastor, thank you for what you are helping, how you are blessing my family. Thank you for the word of God. He always, he was, he's full of joy. Amen. Amen. That is how you beautify. Now, this woman had been dressing beautifully, even before we met. They always dress, you know, you Ghanaian ladies, you know how to dress. Fine, fine dressing. But the dressing will not win him. What won him is the character, the respectful and pure conduct. It matters a lot. So everything with prayer and every other thing, because we pray for the husband too. We did pray. We did everything now work together to produce what she's enjoying today. Amen. Amen. Peace of mind. Amen. If you are a Christian man, a Christian husband, if you do not respect your wife, you don't support her, you don't do what you're supposed to do outwardly in the, in, the, in the way to show that you love your wife and you respect her. Hello? You have problem with your wife. Glory to God. So your conduct towards your wife, your way of talking, the choice of words and language and vocabulary in talking to your wife, it matters a lot. So speaking in tongues is not enough to win your wife. See, the Holy Spirit doesn't doesn't only give us ability to speak in tongues. Sometimes He gives, he, in fact, so He gives us ability to also say, "I am sorry." Sometimes I, I'm a pastor Joseph. I tell my wife sometimes when I'm okay, I realize I'm wrong. I say, "I'm sorry, my dear. I'm sorry. I'm really sorry." <laughs> Even this morning, I said sorry to her. This morning. Amen. You understand? Hello? Oh, she cut some pineapple, you know, pineapple, put it in a, a bowl uh, for her, for me, for her, for, you know, plenty. Well, I got there, I had almost everything. <laughs> I had almost everything and passed the rest to David. I think I gave the remaining two to David and David to her. So when she came, she said, uh-huh. What happened to the pineapple? I said, We ate it. And of course, since I know what will happen, I said, Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> and I said, I'm sorry, I need like two or three times. I said, uh-huh. I'm really sorry. <laughs> because I knew I've done something stupid. You understand? No, and then what I did is stupid. Why should I eat everything? Shouldn't I not remember her? Ah, you understand. So, you see, the, the fact that I'm a, I'm a man of God doesn't mean I cannot apologize to my wife when I do something stupid. You understand? So, I, I should love is gentle. If I truly love my wife, I should respect her. I should not now shout at her and say, eh, what if I eat everything? Am I, am I, am I not your husband? No, that is, that is even, uh, yes, am I not the one who, who owns the money? Uh, no, that is stupid. You don't talk to your wife like that. See, so the righteousness of God that is inside you as a believer, 
Let it manifest in your conduct towards your, your human being. You understand? That's what we are saying. Amen. So the Holy Spirit doesn't only give us ability to speak in tongues. He also helps us to say sorry. Amen. So I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I don't mean I'm sorry. Hallelujah. He helps us to accept our wrong and to apologize. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I said glory to God. Hallelujah. So if you are a Christian woman about to marry or you want to get married or you're already married and you are celebrating the righteousness of God inside you, I congratulate you. But go, you know, uh-huh. don't stay there. Let that righteousness manifest. Amen. Amen. As a husband, let that righteousness of God that you are celebrating manifest to your wife. Amen. Amen. Hope somebody understands what I'm saying. I hope it's clear. So this is how we dress ourselves as husbands and wives, particularly as wives. Amen. Amen. That's why Proverbs chapter 11, verse 22. You remember? Look at, go back there. Proverbs 11, 22. Proverbs 11, 22. Proverbs 11, 22. Look at it. He says, like a gold ring in a pig's snout, is a beautiful woman without what? Discretion. If you lack discretion, Amen. Amen. So a beautiful woman, nicely dressed, fine hairstyle, nice, uh, you know, nicely shaped clothing. But she lacks discretion in communication with her husband. The Bible says her beauty is useless and, you know, inconsequential, like a gold ring in the nose of a pig. The mind will not, the man will not, will not see it. The man will not see it. He won't. Amen. Amen. So every man wants to be honored and respected. So we should do that. Amen. Look at the book of Proverbs chapter 21. Proverbs 21. Look at verse 9. Proverbs chapter 21 verse 9. 
He says, it is better to live in a corner of the, of the house top. Do you know the corner of the house top? The corner of the house top. Do you see this building? One corner of the top. Do you imagine somebody living on the top of this roof? And staying, not on top, one corner. Just stay there, one corner, JJ, like that. Too. He says, it's better to, to dwell eh, in the corner. Eh, to live in a corner of the house top than in a house, in a big house. Shared with what? A quarrelsome wife. A quarrelsome wife. Emma, do you understand? Do you, do, do you get it? Do you understand? So, that is the good cloth we should dress ourselves with. Proper, respectful conduct. Godly conduct. It should be. Amen. Amen. Finally, look at the book of Proverbs 31. Proverbs 31. Proverbs 31. Proverbs 31. Proverbs 31. Proverbs 31. Now, if he's talking about the, uh, you know, the excellent wife, right, from verse 10. But uh, I will, if, if, when you get home, you can read from verse 10. But I want you to just show us something um, from verse 28. He says, uh, Children rise up and call her blessed. A uh, husband also, and he praises her. Verse 29. Many women have done excellently, but you surpass them all. Charm is deceitful, and beauty is vain. But a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Verse 31 says, Give her the fruit of her hands, and let her works, her works, that is her good works, a good conduct, praise her in the gates. In the gates means in the place of decision, in high places, in public places. You understand? So this is the word of God. Praise the Lord. Hello. Are you with me this morning? Hello. This is the word of God. This is how God wants godly women to be dressed. With that, with it, with with respectful and pure conduct or behavior. Amen. So in the home, let's be well dressed. When we come next, when we come next, we will go further into Christian dressing. Yeah. I hope we are understanding Christian dressing now. Is it about uh, not wearing trousers? Is that about you wearing, always wearing skirt? A man will respect the housemate that is wearing dirty clothes and thin cloth. If they and we may even fall in love with her and sleep with her. If the wife is nice, some women will say, I don't know what he's looking for again. Look at me. Look at me. You are fine, we know. But let's watch. Let's look at you properly. Let's look at them. They, they, so, so, especially all these celebrity women, 
They are too proud. They are too arrogant. They are so arrogant and proud. And the housemaid is always respecting the, the, the boss at home. But the wife is too proud. Uh, James, come and tie my hair. Just one. You must kneel down. So see, I do. Ha, Africa, man. Hmm. You are looking for trouble, small, small. That is how the marriage starts breaking. And when the man now sees respect from a uh, house girl, housemaid, or uh, somebody in the office, the secretary in the office always saying, yes, sir. I mean, see, there's something every man that loves respect to. Let's talk ourselves the truth. But you are not showing him that honor, that respect. Before you know it, he's getting attracted to the other person. Trouble will start. That's why the Bible is teaching us this truth. As you pray, you pray in tongues, you read your Bible, you do everything. Please, Christian wives, mind your mannerism, your, mind, your manner of talking, your manner of communication to your husband, your attitude towards him. Don't call him names that will make him look like he's stupid, like, no, no. Even when he acts stupidly, don't, don't tell him he's stupid. Learn to talk in a diplomatic way. Amen. Amen. And let him know that you respect him. Or else, he will have excuse against you in public. But if he doesn't have any excuse against you in public, even his own friends will say, ah, ah, Oga, do jaje now. This is too much. They will tell him, don't lose this woman. This way you are, you are going to lose this fine woman. You understand? You get my point. So let's respect our husband. And we that are Christian men too. Christian men. Don't say, I'm the boss in the home. Me, your pastor, I follow this book, this word of God. I don't boss my wife at all. I don't do that. I don't boss my wife. Amen? Amen. The other time on Thursday, she was not so strong. She needed to wash clothes. And she was telling me, uh, darling, I want you to help me in washing. I first suggested that, oh, our first son is there. Emmanuel is at home. So what is he doing? He should be able to help you. But when I found that she wants me to help her, she wants me, she loves me to help her, I said, no problem. You know what I did? I do my prayer 4 o'clock. I start my prayer 4 o'clock or 5. But that's when she wanted to start washing around 4, 10, 4 o'clock. So I put prayer one side, went to help my wife to wash and dry. Then I came back and do my prayer. That is respect for my wife. That is love for my wife. I didn't boss her and say, look, I don't have time. I don't have your time. If you cannot tell the man of God, I'll teach you, forget it. I don't have time. No, that is stupid. That is wrong. Amen. And don't use insulting words to your wife. Don't ever do that as a Christian husband. Don't do that. Respect your wife. And why do respect the husband? Amen. Amen. This is the word of God. Now, 
Amen. Are we blessed this morning? Yes. So when we come next, we will continue from there. Let's be on our feet. I want, us, I want us to commit what we have received in, into, unto the Lord in prayer. Commit what you have heard unto the Lord in prayer. And be, in your heart, in your mind, now begin to renew your mind with God's word. And begin to renew your mind. Let the word of God change your mind. That is proper. This is proper Christian. This is proper proper Christian dressing. This is the proper Christian dressing. This is the God approved Christian dressing. Be clothed with good conduct. Good works. Good conduct. Good behavior. Respectful communication. That is how they will see the righteousness of God that is inside you. Let your light shine. That men may see your good works. That your husband may know that you are born again. That your wife may know that you are a child of God. That everyone may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Pray, pray in the Holy Spirit. I say, Lord, help me. Lord, help me. I yield myself, I surrender myself to the wisdom of your word. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. Pray. Pray in the Holy Spirit. Pray in the Holy Ghost.